Hey there, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned in to Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you like it, of course, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today we're going to talk about technology first. We're going to look at QQQ, XLK, and SOSX because they are hitting their moment of truth and could hold the key for the next leg in technology. And then if we go down a level, we're going to look at software, cloud computing, and cybersecurity. And those three are already breaking down. They led on the way down in, earlier in March, and they're lagging again and look like they're headed lower. And we'll see that money has changed and it's moving into defensive areas of the market like staples. And we got maybe healthcare going for a breakout. And then I'm going to update the Hankanashi candlesticks that I charted last week for the China large cap ETF, for the South Korean ETF. And we'll look at candles for the Brazil ETF. So we're going to start off here with the QQQ because it is underperforming but still holding up. We're going to look at QQQ, XLK, and the semiconductor ETF, SOSX, because those three are holding up. And I think those are the three to watch to see if we're going to get another leg lower in technology. So what we've got here is QQQ in candlesticks, and we've got the S&P 500 as the gray line. And when you put it behind the chart for QQQ, you can see when QQQ is keeping pace and when it's lagging. So for instance, you see here, we're hitting this February high here in QQQ, and so is the S&P 500. So they're both moving pretty much in tandem. And they've been moving in tandem for several months now. But that changed here in March, because what you had here in March is, you had this very sharp decline, as you can see here, and you broke this late January low. Whereas the S&P 500, there's that late January low, it did not break it. So it held above it during that decline. And then if you looked at the subsequent bounce, you can see the S&P 500 moved to a new high and QQQ didn't even get above that early March high. It has a lower high. So it had more selling pressure on the way up and it had weaker buying pressure on the way, uh, more selling pressure on the way down and weaker buying pressure on the way up. So QQQ is still lagging. Now, my concern here is that we get some sort of a ABC correction and that comes out of the Elliott wave book. So you have kind of wave A, wave B and wave C. And so if we get a wave C, we'd expect to move down to that 295, maybe 290 area towards that rising 200-day moving average. And that might be a place to look for an end to a correction. And I'm still calling it a correction because let's face it, the S&P 500 hit a new high. We're in a bull market still. And after this huge run over the past year, we're entitled to a corrective process. If you look at the September-October period, you had a two-month correction before you got the breakout. And so this was a consolidation within an uptrend, and then we got the breakout. So maybe we have a zigzag correction this time instead of this flat consolidation correction that we had last time. So what do we watch for to see if we're going to get that correction? Well, you can see here, we've got some lows around 310. And if the Qs bounce and fail to hold this and break back below 310, then I would suggest we're heading towards that 395 area. And I'd also venture to guess that if you put on your Fibonacci retracements, you're getting to that 50% retracement there. And that's a place for a possible for reversal. So watch that 310 area for the Qs. Now, I've also got XLK here. Similar situation. You got the break below the January low. So relative weakness, strong selling pressure on the way down. You got a bounce, didn't get to a new high, so still weak. And you've got a support level there. We'll call it 129. So if you break 129, 
for XLK, then that's signaling a continuation lower. Excuse me, I can't get that straight line going. But there is 129. And then if you look at the semiconductor SBDR, the semiconductor iShares, we can see that it's holding up fairly well. You know, you still broke below that January low. You've got a bounce. You're consolidating now. And you need to watch the 400 level. Because if you break 400, then that signals a continuation lower. So if these three break down, I think that technology is heading for another leg down in its normal correction. I don't think, you know, having a correction within an uptrend is abnormal or it's cause for concern to say we're in a bear market. We don't have a bear market signal yet. Now, if we dive down further within the technology sector, we're going to look at software, cloud computing, and cybersecurity. These ETFs are even weaker, and they may be about to drag down QQQ and XLK. If you look at IGV here, you can see that it broke below the January, the early January low. That's how sharp the decline was there. And it got a pretty weak bounce. And it looks like it's already ready to continue lower. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, IGV is going down to 290. I don't know how far it's going to go. But I do think we've had a decline, a bounce, and we got some sort of continuation down. I'm also really not interested in short positions when the bigger trend is up when you're in a bull market. I'll just wait till it comes to support and some sort of bullish setup materializes if it does. And then if we look further down here at cloud computing, we can see the weakness there. It broke below its early January low as well, had a weak bounce, and it's already turning down. So within the technology sector, the growth end is getting hit. Cybersecurity, same thing, broke below that January low, got a bounce, and it's already heading back down. So it could be heading for a date for that, for the, with, with that 200-day and maybe that breakout zone around 52. Now, we're seeing some of the previous laggards pick up the slack a little bit, and one of them is consumer staples. And consumer staples is definitely a defensive sector. You know, you can do without a new iPhone, but you can't do without toothpaste and toilet paper and beer. You definitely can't do without beer. So this is what the consumer staples sector brings us, all those things that we can't do without. And we can see a bit of a channel working here. So we tested the rising 200-day. And look at that. You get this sharp decline. You get a couple of inside days and a barely a lower low and then the surge. And this is kind of like a five, six candlestick reversal here, that sharp decline. These kind of indecisive candlesticks here. With, look at the high upper shadows and then that big white candlestick to reverse. And then we get a follow through with a breakout here. So consumer staples is definitely picking up the slack. And that also affirms that we are in a more defensive oriented market. Now, we've also seen utilities and staples perk up. And I want to focus on healthcare because I'm wondering if it's got a breakout working on its chart. Because you can see you had this big move up. And then we have this zigzag correction. And we have a bounce, and it kind of looks like technology in the fact that it has been lagging a little bit. But you got this surge, and we got what could be a flag here forming right near that channel line here where it's trying to break out. And if we can get a break out of this flag, say 116, I think that's going to be bullish for healthcare, and it could attract a little more money. So over at Trend Investor Pro on Wednesday, I put out a long article on chart strategy, basically. How to set your expectations, how to deal with time frames. I'm using three indicators for three different time frames. We're looking at trends, setups, and signals. And I've created a new chart layout that I'm going to be using here. And what I've got is I've got a long-term trend identification chart in the upper left there. 
with the Stoke Close Indicator for Trends. And then I've got my Medium Term Setups chart here. Closes only to filter out the noise and look for the patterns at work. And then I've got a candlestick chart in the lower left. And in this article, I detail how to use all three to go from trend to setup to signal. And check that out. It's available to all subscribers at trendinvestorpro.com. So I want to give a brief update to the Hank and Ashi analysis that I did last week because we can see that we didn't get a breakout. We had this very sharp decline. This is FXI, the China large cap ETF, and we were firming here. And I marked a resistance level there at 49 and a half. And you can see we did not get a breakout. And that's the difference between a setup and a signal. So you, first thing you do is you look at the long-term trend. So the long-term trend is up. And then you look for a setup. And what's a setup? Well, a setup is when you get a pullback within that long-term uptrend. So here is a nice pullback here. And then third is you get a signal. And that is some sort of a breakout. So you can see here we had a breakout there to get this advance started. And so now we've got the setup here. We had the setup when we were consolidating here. We had one big up day, but fell back. But we had the setup in play, but we didn't have the signal. And we needed to get that breakout there to get the signal. And you see, we didn't get the breakout. And now we can decline sharply the last couple of days and are testing the 200 day for FXI. So that's why it's important, I think, to wait for the signal, because if you front run, sometimes you can get whipsawed out. Here's ASHR, the 300 A share ETF for China, and it's similar. It's broken down again and it's headed lower. And then if we look at the Crane Internet shares, same thing, did not get the breakout above that resistance level from those highs. And then we look at the China Technology ETF. We can see that it as well did not get the breakout either and fell back. This is still a resistance level to watch, that high from mid-March. Now, I was noticing that the Korea ETF was holding up the best. And it was holding up the best when I did this article or this analysis last week. And so if we look at this Korean ETF, we can see it's still consolidating, but we still have a resistance level, a resistance hurdle to get a signal. So we need to get a break above 90 to reverse this downtrend, but it is still one to watch. And then if we look at Japan, it is testing support after a pullback here. So there is Japan and it, well, it's not really testing support yet. Uh, but it's within a consolidation. It's had its breakout move, but now it's falling back. So it's kind of just in a monitoring phase. And then we look at Brazil. And I think Brazil did have a trigger because it got the breakout there. And now it's kind of battling this breakout zone. So here's where you got to monitor the trade and put in your line in the sand. I would say you go below 32 and this trade is not on anymore. It's not working and you have to reevaluate. So if you'd like to know more about trendinvestorpro.com, you can click on the link below in the description. Again, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Stock Charts. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great day and I'll talk to you again next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.